I'm gonna do a little bit of a video on this F, this uh, FLH here, 1990. Uh, I didn't do any filming. I've been working on it off and on for about two weeks now. Uh, to take it out for a test drive, and uh, every time I take it out for a test drive, I just find little things that need need adjustment or things that aren't quite right. And the one thing that bothered me was the exhaust. Um, well, first of all, I'm getting a popping through the intake. And that's either uh, too lean, usually too lean on the idle circuit, air leak on the intake manifold, uh, or exhaust. So, <clears throat> I've been checking everything. <laughs> I, hate, I hate that popping. It's just every once in a while. So, <clears throat> this was the exhaust that was on here. And it's a Kirker. It's an aftermarket Kirker exhaust. And well, where's my light? Put it on here. And you can see it's basically right straight through. It's a loud exhaust. It's all right for short little rides and stuff like that. And uh you know, but if I'm, I'm going to do a long tour on this bike, I want to go for a nice long ride. I don't want that thing buzzing in my ear all the way there. It, it's loud. It's noticeably loud. So, um, when I bought that, um, that bike over there, the uh, 1985 FXR, that bike, the guy gave me a set of uh, brand new... Um, well, they were takeoffs. They were new takeoffs. This is actually the box it came in. Uh, 19, he said they're off a 1989 FLHTC. Electro glide. But uh, because it says stamp right on these mufflers down here, I'll show you one second. You can see these mufflers, they got the slash cut going that way. And I'm, I'm looking up 1989 and 90 and I don't see the slash cut going that way. Usually goes, but on 1999, I see the slash cut going that way for one year. Now maybe it, it did or didn't, I don't know. <laughs> but these are original Harley Davidson pipes and they're like, they're dirty, but it's like new condition. It's got the Harley part number on it and everything. So I put them on there. It runs a lot quieter. Didn't affect the popping at all or anything in the intake manifold. But I've been reading a lot more and more about that. I actually took this all off again and took the carb off. And uh, uh, it just wasn't sitting perfectly... Uh, straight in that manifold so i took it all off tried to get it in straighter loosen off all the clamp bolts and i got as best i could and i even put a little bit of a gasket goop around the 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 main intake flange going in just to see if i had an air leak in there i'm going to try to get it hot today and spray some uh, uh fluid some kind of aerosol around the intake to see if i got a leak there but i know i'm going to pull it all off again anyways now there is a dent in that intake manifold on the top that I noticed. And uh, I've read if there's any kind of a ding or dent, well, it's one YouTube channel I watch there, Scotty uh, Scooter Tramp there, and he says, there's a dent or ding in there at all, that's gonna be your problem. So um, I'm gonna try to replace that or fix that. And uh, I'm gonna look for a warpage on the flans, the flanges. Cause I got all new gaskets and seals on there. I took my time putting it all together, perfectly lined up and straight, but I think I'm sucking air there somewhere. <clears throat> this FLH 1990 has the 45 uh, idle circuit jet, and I think it's the 185 main jet. Uh, you know, and they don't. I can't find a 46 or 47 idle circuit jet, but they make a 48, so I might go to a 48. But the first thing I want to do is look for leaks. On that intake manifold, so I'm going to take that all apart. Okay, so that's that's for that's what I've been doing on this thing the last couple of weeks, <laughs> trying to fix those things. Plus, um, I always had a little bit of an oil leak down here, and 
I'll show you what that was. Oh, I had starter motor problems too, too. I've been fixing the starter motor. Uh, down there I put a, actually I got some videos of that. A new starter kit in there. Yeah, that's another whole video of that, that story. So anyways, down here, I always had oil dripping off the oil filter. And uh, I noticed this oil filter was loose just a little bit <clears throat> when I uh, changed the oil there a couple months ago. And I just couldn't see where to tighten it up. And then when I checked it the other day, it was getting really loose. And the bolt is uh, on top of the transmission. It goes through the transmission housing, I believe. And then below the starter motor. Okay, so right. I'll show you something here. Okay, you can see that brass fitting. Where's my finger? Right here. That brass fitting right there. I was able to tighten up the, the housing with a little short stubby ratchet 9 16th wrench from taking off the seat and reaching my hand down in there. It's really hard to get out and it's all done by feel. And I was able to tighten it up really good. But then I noticed this brass fitting, I could push it up and down, it was loose. And that's where my oil was dripping from here. So I had to take the whole thing off and uh, what they say to do is take the starter motor off and uh, uh, lock tight that bolt in. But to tighten up this fitting here, I had to take this fitting off. Um, this is, the, I believe this is the feed and this is the return. I'm pretty sure. But anyways, I, uh, I, I took it off and uh, put some thread sealant on both of these, put them back in. Yeah, but I, I couldn't get that bolt back in. It's really hard to do. I'll show you the bolt. <laughs> this is what I ended up doing. I'll show you what I did with that. I just had it sitting right there. Yeah, where did it go? Let me find that. So this is the bolt that holds in your oil filter housing. I don't know, three eighths by an inch and a half or something like that, inch and a quarter. And uh, it's on top of your transmission cover. There's actually a big spacer washer. There's a big washer that goes on here too. And you could just barely get your finger, you gotta reach down and underneath and you can barely get your fingers on it. Luckily, I was able to turn it loose. <clears throat> I tried to do it all with leaving this bolt in here. I did not want to take this bolt out because I knew if it ever took it out, I'd never get it tightened back up again. So uh, um, I got those lines all tightened up by dropping it down and taking them out and putting thread sealant on those fittings and uh, putting it back together. And just as I was pushing it back up to tighten this, it fell out. Like the, <laughs> It came out. It's like a cone. It's a cone shaped, that housing that fits into the transmission and then this bolt sits on top. So I tried to hold it up from the bottom. I wedged some pieces of wood in there and then I tried to uh, thread this with my fingers and get the washer, it was impossible. I, I spent like a half hour, couldn't do it. So I took that all out and I had, uh, I had a longer bolt like this, actually the one that's clamped in the vise there. And I made a stud. So I made the stud a little bit longer so it threads in, Loctited it in, into the oil filter housing. And so now I just push the stud up through the transmission. So just this is sticking up. Wedge some wood underneath the oil filter to hold it in place. And uh, then I could reach in there and get a washer on this and get a nut on there, put a little bit of Loctite on it. And so it took me a lot of fishing though to get that in there. It's all by feel, you can't see nothing. You got to kind of feel around with your finger, feel this, get the nut in there and try to reach it in there. You know, and the starter motor's right on top of your hand. Really hard to do, but I got it started. And then I just got a, or got a short stubby um, my short stubby ratchet right here. Like this. You can get a long wrench in there 
but you can only get like a, a short pull and I actually use the long wrench at the very end to give it a really good pull but if you put a long wrench there you're only getting like a, a little bit of a turn each time so you get a little one of these in there and you can tighten it right up it took me an hour <laughs> my hands were completely black filthy got it in there anyway so that was one problem I got fixed and so I took the bike for a good drive me and my wife went for a drive the other night and uh, the bike's been parked here ever since hasn't leaked a drop so I got the I got the oil leak fixed <laughs> got the oil leak fixed got the exhaust noise fixed um, um, oh and I got the seat moved back two inches that was the other thing too I'm six foot two, six foot two, 220. And uh, I felt like I was sitting on top of the tank up here. You can see how much I pulled it back. Normally this is uh, right up to here, but in, in, this, in this grab rail piece, this is the chrome piece that the bolt goes through to hold the seat on. This was bolted to the bike, and then the seat is bolted to this. And there was two positions um, for, for this to be bolted to the frame. So I moved it to the back position, but then, but then, I can't bend my leg too much, but, but then it wouldn't bolt to this flat plate on the carrier back here. So I had to re-drill a hole in there and then, and then bolt it. Made my own hole, bolted it, and that brought it back inch and a half to two inches and that's that's more comfortable for me to drive on it i kept when i was sitting here i kept trying to push my ass back up on top of this thing or sitting back farther so so now it's uh might be a little bit looser on the front maybe i gotta shim that piece up there but <clears throat> so that fits better oh yeah here's the big problem <laughs> I haven't even got to the big problem yet Try to hold this camera still so you don't get dizzy. I'm bad for that. So here's the big problem. This engine's never been apart, 1990. And uh, I don't know if I can bend down with my knee. It's like, well, I can, you can see it from this side. You can see it from this side. So. Uh, oh, okay, one second. So I got the oil leak fixed from underneath, but now I think I pointed this out before. What the hell's going on here? There we go. I got an oil leak. I'm not sure if it's the base gasket there, but up at the top for, for sure, these, these rubber ones up at the top here are starting to leak. I don't think this engine's ever been apart. It's only got 40, uh, 7, 47,000 kilometers on it. Right there, I've put on uh, four, three or four hundred already. And uh, come on, the lighting's terrible. There we go. It's uh, you can see it's all wet there at the base. I I wipe it up, and you can see it's kind of leaking here a little bit, leaking here at the head, and it's leaking at the top here, and that's just the rear cylinder. But once one goes, they both go. I got a gasket kit, so I got to pull that off. And like I say, most of these engines don't have these original stock caps still on them. People take them off, never put them on. So I expect that's never been a part. So I'm going to have to take a day, <clears throat> pull that all apart again. Because uh, like I say, I want to go on a long trip. It's going to be at least 2,700 kilometers maybe 3,000 if I go up to Thunder Bay and circle around through uh, um, Montana, maybe the Dakotas, and then come back. So I, I got to pull that apart and do that, fix that up. Because it could really start pissing oil and burning on the exhaust, and who knows what else could happen. So the starter motor was another problem. Um, I think I got some videos of that redoing that i ordered a screaming eagle kit to put in there and then notice the screaming eagle doesn't get as much contact as the original harley davidson one did 
So I kind of used pieces from one and then the Screaming Eagle one and made that work. But then I went to start the bike the other day and I'm hitting this thing. Well, first of all, a couple times it was going zing, zing, like it wasn't catching or, you know, I think the starter clutch is probably going on this too. But uh, after putting that new switch in there, it, it should click and catch. And it wasn't. And then it wouldn't do anything. It was just going click, click, click. The lights were on, wasn't going to go off. Behind this cover here is your uh, starter relay. And it's a five pin connector. And I just happened to have one as uh, just a miracle. I ordered one about two months ago. And not for that purpose. I was going to make a double switch. So that's the old one there. I was going to make a double switch for the signal lights so that I could have a four-way flashers. I was going to wire it in that way. And so I ordered one of these online. So I ordered this switch online. And when I pulled this off, I go, man, that looks just like the one that I ordered for the uh, four-way flashers. And uh, I was just going to make it myself. It's not anything you can buy. This is just an aftermarket one. I think they're like eight or nine bucks. I don't know, Harley probably charges you 60 for that. Plugged it in, it worked, everything works fine. It's exact same relay, exact same one as a Harley relay. And uh, this was from, probably made in China or something like that, but uh, um, yeah, plug that in, starts beautiful now. No more zinging, tinging, get good contact, because this, this stopped working. I could hear it clicking, but it wasn't working. It wasn't, uh, one part of the cylinder was, was activating but the power wasn't going through the other side so it must be corroded on the inside so i got lucky there uh this the shifter linkage on the transmission they come loose they get i've been tightening it loosening it tightening it well you got to take the bolt right out clean the threads up really good i sprayed some cleaner in the uh the linkage itself in the hole and the threads threaded in and out a bunch of times i cleaned the threads off on the wire wheel and then I put a little dab of grease on it. I also put a lock washer on that Allen head. It's an Allen head, chrome, hardened bolt. And uh, um, you see, because you don't want it coming loose, I put an Allen head on there. I didn't want to lock tight it in because uh, you, you'll never get it out from here without stripping it. So I put that in there. So that tightened that right up nice and tight. That was loose as a goose. And now I've got, when I'm driving, there's a lot of kinds of rattles on this bike I'm trying to clean up too. <laughs> And a couple of them are the latches. That's why they that's why they went away, away from these bags with these latches. The latches always vibrate and come loose. But uh, the other one is this. I, I got too much free play in here, so I'm gonna take that free play out. I, I guess I could put some grease in here too, that'll soften that up. But, um, that's the other issue. Lots of little rattles. I got one latch here, this latch here. You can see it doesn't quite go tight. Like these ones are a little tighter. This one rattles when you're driving it. Just trying to get all the rattles out of it. And I got a new uh, uh, radio aerial cable coming it's in it should be in with the package goes into here for the aerial the old aerial is still in here but it's it's chopped off up at the uh, up at the um, radio so I had to buy a whole new one there I got one on eBay somebody was selling one I think it's new I think it's brand new for 10 bucks so I'll wire that in and that's the stock radio on there it still works everything works on that a little ugly but it works okay I think that's it for all the little stuff I've been working on on this thing for now I was missing a cotter pin on the rear axle I saw that the other day when I had the bags off um, yeah the next big thing though is I'm gonna have to pull both cylinders down to the base gaskets and put all new gaskets in clean it all up and, and that'll take care of that it, this is a good running bike good smooth running bike so the intake manifold and uh, i'll do that at the same time as the as i pull the uh, cylinder heads off 
Okay, that's it for this video. Oh, I forgot to mention, when I took out the stock exhaust and put it on and I held it up to the light, all I could see was a whole quarter inch round, the size of a pencil, compared to that uh, Kirker. It, it, it's, because it's like a cone in there. It starts out with the size of a pencil and the cone gets bigger and then it deflects the sound through the baffles on the outside where the Kirker pipes just go right straight through. So it makes it for a lot quieter ride more back pressure. Sometimes with the straight through pipe like that Kirker, you'll get that popping in the exhaust or in the intake and the exhaust. And uh, But I'm sure mine's gonna be an air leak around that manifold somewhere because I've tried everything. I've turned the mixture screw out to three turns. That's as rich as you wanna go. Um, so I'm thinking uh, I need an intake manifold there. I know it's got a dent in it, so that's probably the culprit right there. Okay, that's the end of this video.